Claus was a good child, the very goodest. He did everything he was told when he was told. He even did good things without being told. That's how good he was. Can you just tell us briefly what is the goodie about? It's the story of a boy called Churton Krauss who always does the right thing and he always does what he's told when he's told and he becomes known as the goodie. And it's also the story of his sister Myrtle Krauss who never does what she's told when she's told and she's known as the not goodie. Churton suddenly sits up in bed one evening and decides that maybe there's a lot more in it for him if he became more like his sister Myrtle. So he decides to stop being a goodie. And the story really is exploring this idea of, of these children breaking out of the roles that have been given to them. Chayton always ate his broccoli, every single stock, even though broccoli was his least favourite of all his least favourite vegetables. Jayton's sister Myrtle had never been given a goodie anything, not even one of those goodie bags that they give out at the end of every party. Myrtle wasn't invited to parties anymore. You see, Myrtle was not a good child. Everyone told her so. And Myrtle never forgot to remember this. If people have decided you are bad, do not disappoint them by being good. And in what way would you say this story differs in a way from the, the Charlie and Lola and the Clarys being kind of family dramas? So with the Charlie and Lola books, they're all, they're all told in Charlie's voice. And they're really um, about the relationship between this brother and sister, between the siblings. And so although there's this sort of issue um, within the book, there's a subject which might be not wanting to go to school or or not wanting to go to bed. Actually, it's about that relationship between the children and how they solve the problem. Clarice Bean is, is similar, um, although there's a bigger cast. So it's still told in a child's voice, and but really, although there's a plot, it's really about the relationships. That's the most important thing. The goody is slightly different because it's much more focused on the issue at hand, which is which is about labels, the way that we assign people roles. So we don't really get to know more about the the brother and sister, but we're really concentrating on on the subject. And it's told at a distance because it's told by a narrator, and it's very much on the side of the child. So I've written these sentences, which are printed in red at the bottom of most of the pages, and it's as if the the narrator is sort of giving you a little dig in the ribs and saying, do you agree with that? Do you think that's right? And so there's a, it's more about, about the relationship between the book and you rather than the children in the book. A few nights later, Chetan woke up with a tickly cough. So he went downstairs to get a glass of water. He found Myrtle watching TV and stuffing Cocoa Puffs into her mouth. She wasn't eating that carefully. A lot of them were going on the carpet. How come Myrtle is allowed to stay up late watching TV? asked Chilton. Oh, I can never get Myrtle to bed, said Alba, the babysitter. So I just let her stay up. Now, does that sound fair to you? It seems to me that it, it's going, it, it, it's a deeper sort of psychological angle to this. Um, I just wondered about the, the origin of the story. Where did, you, where did the idea come from? Well, in a way, I've been thinking about it ever since I was a child because it used to frustrate me sometimes when you were sort of wrapped up in these, these adjectives. I wondered about turning it into a story because I thought it's pretty universal this thing where we describe people very quickly in these few words 
and we do this you know to adults as well as children but I think it has a particularly big effect on children. Even the labels that seem quite complimentary sometimes they can also be quite tricky to live with. I think that's a really interesting point there that you know, positive labels can also be sublimiting. This is interesting about Charlton, I think, because he is the goody. But your point in the book also seems to be that that, being a goody, too, can be a bit of a burden. Yes. And at one point, there's this lovely line where Charlton says, what's so good about being a goody? When he's realising all the things that mm. Martin gets up to, like eating Cocoa Pops late at night and staying up yeah. and watching TV, that he is not able to do because he's going to be early, like a goody.